I find that facing each other like makes the conversation the richest. Yeah. But okay. yeah, we could try this. This is kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> what's the last drug you did? Um, <laughs> you're right. You warned me that the it's gonna be surprising questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're entitled to answer it however you want, and also not answer it. Well, um, I guess it'd be. I did a ayahuasca ceremony in, or several in the um, Upper Peruvian Amazon a mm. couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and it was it was profound and very healing, also. And I'm the cool thing about it is um I was with um this ethnomusicologist friend of mine who had recorded the music of the Shapiba fourteen years ago and he and his wife wanted to go back and and record a new album. Um but with their the album's out and you can listen to it. But they, it was with um, total artistic license of the Shipibo, like how they wanted to present their music, and all the proceeds go to them of the album. And they invited me to come along and and um, mostly just draw all the experience, like document through drawing mm -hmm. while they recorded music. So we stayed with this family for a couple weeks and um with no electricity and minimal like water in the jungle and they were so cool so welcoming and filled with humor and um unbelievable artists because they they um well they sing it's called Icaros and and um, they sing the visions they have. They've been using ayahuasca for thousands of years, and but then the women also can they see the Icaros they're singing in this like design that they then stitch all over their clothing and paint on the on buildings and. So every woman and woman in the tribe can look at a piece of cloth and go back and like sing it. Whoa. It's so amazing. That is amazing. And so when I did the ceremony, um, my my life partner had passed away the year before, and um, so I went there partly to just help heal from that, you know, and my grieving process but when we did the ceremony it was very surprising to me because it was the whole family like the whole huge extended family like children and elders and pretty much how they do it is anyone who's drawn to or called to participate in um, taking the ayahuasca does and so some people in the tribe have never even used it, and others have started from a very young age. Hmm. And it's this plant medicine that, that um, you know, like induces all these hallucinatory experiences and, um, and visions, but it's, um, it's so interesting because it kind of, informs the song but the songs inform it like mm -hmm. the songs guide it's as if the, the music came experience from it. Yeah. but in turn the experience guides the song mm -hmm. and it's the whole culture is kind of just mind-blowing in that way like which comes first kind of thing mm -hmm. throughout like the plants tell them how to then use the plants make the brew and, yeah yeah What's the biggest issue facing New Mexico? Um, Here, and move the mic closer. I, I don't know, actually. Maybe okay. it's too much to think about the camera. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
so it, there'll be a uh, cut maybe and then um what's the biggest issue facing new mexico hmm I think, I mean, the same issues facing the world that I think that we have this elite at the very top, some of our world leaders and um, trillionaires, you know, like corporate heads and who are kind of calling the shots to just exploit like every last drop of water and lands and mm -hmm. and sky and resource and um i think that the vast majority of the people of the planet just want kind of a simple life to a roof over their head and to have some laughs and cook some meals and raise a family and i think that the whole world could we could have a sustainable structure mm -hmm. where we're all fed and we're all cared for and we're all um, custodians of this beautiful, miraculous planet that we're on. But there's these like forces at the very top that that um, are trying to just lock everyone into this this structure resource extraction and wage mm -hmm. slavery and just mm -hmm. the whole thing do you imagine so, technology being the savior that gets us out of this predicament of like the wealth gap and a, a lower than acceptable general mm -hmm. welfare no i think um the human heart is if anything can get us out of it <laughs> beautiful <laughs> it's <laughs> the human spirit <laughs> absolutely uh if you could change one thing about this podcast what would it be <laughs> that's the third and final question um that i ask every guest i think you need some art on your walls. oh i thought you were gonna say more <laughs> lights which would be hilarious yeah we could put some Maybe art up i'm gonna put a movie put poster right there soon for a movie nice. i made for a short film called guapo Oh, cool. Yeah, which you'll hear about in just a second. Hello out there. You're listening to Artist with Brian. I'm Brian here with. with I'm Aaron. <laughs> Thank you for having me on your <laughs> Aaron podcast. Currier. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Aaron is a mixed media and acrylic fine artist. Season four is brought to you by the short film Guapo, free in Spanish on YouTube, March 31st. Guapo. Aaron, as a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Mm, I think at one point I wanted to be a writer. I love to write. Um, as far as art goes, it's kind of just something I always did, like breathing or eating or sleeping. Like it's a given. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's almost always been like, it doesn't matter what else I'm doing. I'm always going to be making art. Mm -hmm. and, and you've known that from an extremely young age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had a lot of jobs, you know, as a teenager. And even before I started working at a really young age. And then through college, too. Um, but I always made art during all of that. So I've just been really fortunate to s been able to support myself yeah. doing what I love for like 20 something years now. Yeah, and it's not even fair to say as a child you wanted to be an artist. You uh, already were. Yeah. Which is quite remarkable. Yeah, it's like I just love making art and drawing was my first love like yeah. I mentioned before. Yeah. Before it I could speak or walk. Yeah. That's why I'm a better ranter than I am a speaker. A better ranter? <laughs> Renderer. Renderer. Um, drawer. Renderer. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. You feel like you can express yourself myself better yeah. through my work. Amazing. And that's where all Talking. the effort comes in. Because, uh, yeah, all the fine details and level of control. I mm -hmm. don't know. 
you have a will to express yourself. I, I feel that way with writing too. I have to write like an hour long drama because uh, whatever's tied up here, like mm -hmm. can't get out with normal language. Yeah. That's cool. What, wow, what? good for you. I'd oh. like to read some of your writings. That would be too. cool. Yeah, I'm totally open to that. So I, you wrote um, Guapo? Yeah, it's Guapo. It's like the last 45 minutes of a marriage in near real time. It's uh, an older married couple having a younger engaged couple over for after dinner drinks. It's it's like loosely inspired by Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Oh, yeah. The play in the film. Oh, that sounds intriguing. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, it's bilingual, meaning the two women are bilingual, and um, one man only speaks English and one man only speaks Spanish. So there's uh, I'm I'm able to use the language gap and uh, to great uh -huh, dramatic that effect. That sounds great. Yeah, because yeah. if you're bilingual, if you're one of the women in the movie that's bilingual, you have a lot of control. Yeah. And agency in the in the scenes about who hears what. Yeah. Um, so it's. I hope it's fascinating wow, for people brilliant. that can speak both languages. Yeah, I made that, and then I'm doing a 10 minute movie that's going to be a dark comedy. Maybe you can read that one. Um, I'm writing it over the next month or two oh, while yeah, I handle I'd everything else. W what advice would you give your 15 year old self? Um, just to not stress anything you know like everything changes everything changes and so if i mean over and over again if you're i had i remember as a teenager i had such angst and melancholy and like mm, everything yeah. was so intense and mm -hmm. it was like the end of the world every day over <laughs> some little thing that was my 20s I was such a <laughs> it's cool you got through that early <laughs> dramatic you know 15 year old but um but uh you know it's um everything is transient and impermanent and so we just have to like savor every moment we have. I think life is a gift. I think so too. And that's great advice to any 15 year old listening. Um, enjoy the hard days too. Yeah. Cause, cause uh, they're the biggest teachers. They're the biggest teachers. And after all the good ones, the hard days are all you got left. Yeah. It's still life. It's still opportunity. And sometimes you learn the most through a really challenging time or well, difficult time. What I like to say is if uh, if you do well, you don't learn anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like every week, week after week, if I'm performing at this open mic doing stand-up and I'm getting laughs, I don't learn. But the the rough sets where I'm just up there and it's quiet. Um, wow, you're I'm so a stand-up comedian too? Uh, multifaceted. I'm, I'm clearly not good enough at anything yet. But I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm working, working toward there. Well, please let me know the next time you do stand up. It's every Wednesday at Chili Land. I promote it like crazy on this podcast because I want, I want people to come out live. Uh, there's about every Wednesday at ten Chili to Land? twenty people that are doing it in the ecosystem. Oh, wow. So you'll get to see like a solid hour every any Wednesday of like people doing five minutes at a time. I'd love that. Yeah, what time yeah. is it? Uh, it's roughly eight to nine thirty. Sometimes they they hold it till like eight fifteen, eight twenty. So there's a bigger crowd. Ah, perfect. Cause my um, tango classes start back up again. Also, one. So you're learning how to do tango or teaching? Um, I've been kind of a lifelong <laughs> learner. Now. Well, not lifelong, but I've been doing tango dancing off and on for many years. Mm -hmm. But um but off for a long period, so I'm kind of a perpetual beginner, intermediate of it, but mm. I love it. Mm. So yeah, I'm taking a class that um, starts up here in Santa Fe, James and Krista, Eight Style Tango. Yeah. They're good friends of mine, they're unbelievable tango dancers, and um, they're teaching seven to eight, so. Your on listeners Wednesday? can it's learn back to, to back. tango and yeah. then come hear you for some laughs. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so who are your favorite comedians? Uh, this guy named Tim Dillon right now. Um, oh, yeah, he's good. I really like him because, oh, yeah, you you are linked up with Joe Rogan 
through your fascination with MMA. Mm -hmm. I would guess that's your entree. Or are you a real big podcast fan? Um, well, I also, I've been doing martial arts yes, for over exactly. 20 years. And so I love the UFC for that reason, because it's, to me, it's an art form. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's just incredibly impressive technique that these people are the highest level, most dedicated, committed, you know, warriors yeah. in my mind. And so, yeah, I love um, Joe Rogan as a commentator, but I started listening to his podcast. And I think that's how I got linked up with Tim Dillon, but he's his own yeah, animal. He's, he's, he's a liberated voice. I admire it so much. And it's just fun. When I feel insane, it's fun to tune into him when I can't make sense of the world. Yeah. Um, outside of him, I don't know, like Stephen Wright and Anthony Jeselnik are my two classics. Uh, Anthony Jeselnik is hilarious. Yeah, and probably, <laughs> I mean, it, just in terms of like content mm -hmm. and style, uh, somewhere, some mix of like Stephen Wright and Jeselnik or just a dark, dark, absurd mm -hmm. comedy. Do but I've only like been doing it six Chappelle? months. Chappelle? Yeah, I mean, Chappelle's... His sets are, well, I've never done a set longer than five minutes, but um, his sets are extremely well composed. Like there's a punchline to the whole damn thing at the end, mm -hmm. like a summation of the theme. Yeah, And totally. I love that. I really, I really admire that. And um, Louis C.K. Oh, you like him? Yeah. Yeah. Who are your favorites? Is, is that it? Chappelle and Louis C.K.? Um, and do you like Bill Burr? Yeah. I love I Bill I mean, he's Burr like, th those guys are like... Um, on the Mount Rushmore of comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Tim Dillon's been doing it 10 years. Yeah, he's great, too. He's and a, yeah. Chris Rock, I've always loved. Yeah, Chris Rock. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, that, that he was at the peak peak of everything. Yeah. He was the guy. He was transcending comedy. Yeah. Yeah. He's hilarious. Do you want to play a little game? A fun little detour before we talk a bit more about art? Sure. It's called Three Star Yelp Review. <laughs> It's uh, wait, what is it called? It's called Three Star Yelp Review. I read a three star Yelp review for a local business, and it's your job to guess which business. Okay. So the category is restaurants mm -hmm. on Canyon Road. Blue Ring Gallery is in the rail yard. Mm -hmm. But I thought as a fine artist in Santa Fe, you might know your way around Canyon Road. So I'm going to read a three star Yelp review from a restaurant on Canyon Road. Okay. If you win, you get to take home this pristine. DVD copy that of so Al Pacino's Serpico. You've seen it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so it's so amazing. <laughs> Everyone's got to see it. You'll take that home today. If you can guess the restaurant that Kelly M. is reviewing about two years ago. Quote, the beet salad had thinly sliced pieces of beet and not a lot of it. I'm used to getting more in a beet salad. You should not call it a beet salad if the beets are such a small percentage of the salad. Also, no Diet Coke. <laughs> Three stars. Any idea what restaurant on Canyon know. Road that is? It sounds like it could be Geronimo or the Compound, maybe. I don't know. 408 reviews, two dollar signs. There's a hint, I suppose. Uh, Average tea four house? stars. You got it right. I That's love amazing. Tea house. I, I love Tea House too. The beet salad, but yeah, it's kind of. I mean, they they have 400 reviews, four stars average. It's a great place to go. Mm-hmm. Um, it is. I parking's pretty decent, actually. I love the Road. oatmeal. You love the oatmeal. Yeah. I love the ambiance. <laughs> it's a yeah. nice place to have a chat with somebody. And you can bring your dog, which oh, is um, a yeah, huge a good plus. patio too. And that lot sometimes is easy to use pay to park cool so you win this we'll leave it here for you but uh, well, i'll yeah. slide it out congratulations Aaron. <laughs> yeah um let's go to a question from a guest from season three this is actor musician mark c westberg oh you'll have to put on the headphones real quick that's okay. the only thing All right. it's kind of a clumsy way to use technology but it's so short too well Joe Rogan uses it. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think I'm going to have like a laptop open at some point and have people with headphones on and we'll watch stuff. Oh, you ready? Yeah. This is from Mark C. Westberg. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking for some reason, what's your favorite type of tea? Oh, green tea. Green tea? Yeah, me too. Why do you like green? 
Mm, that's uplifting. Mm -hmm. So caffeine's a big part of tea for you. I like the flavor too. Flavor too. Cool. Uh, so circling back, how has your practice of martial arts over 20 years changed mm -hmm. your fine art collage? I've been trying. Can I take yeah, this yeah, off? Yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> it's well, almost not worth it. <laughs> I've been trying to put more um, movement into into the large scale collage pieces. That the it's eyes like, will move, or you as the artists are moving? No, like um, with the collage materials. Okay. Like, for example, a couple years ago, I did a series called Muse in Motion and um, I portrayed a skateboarder Judy Oyama for example and there's and she's in motion she's on her skateboard and mm -hmm. you see like all this trash and packaging kind of adding to the movement mm -hmm. and I just recently finished a flamenco piece which Again, I tried like through the trash to to highlight the um, the movement of the dancer. Mm -hmm. And if people want to see uh, see this in digital form, they can go to your Instagram right now while we talk. Aaron Courier, Fine Art Courier, C U R R I E R, mm -hmm. Aaron E R I N. It'll be linked at Artists with Brian as well. Uh, so I noticed the theme in your work, and it's uh, women who are. Um, Fierce, as you call it. Mm -hmm. um, this is coming out a, a bit from MMA, I would think, but it's also just in you. Um, so my question to you is, who's the fiercest woman in Santa Fe? My God, there's so many. Um, Rulon Tanjin comes to mind. That She's a choreographer. Of, she has a company called Dancing Earth, and it's indigenous dancers from all over it's it's a pretty extraordinary dance troupe if you haven't Do seen it. Do they tour or is it all yeah. all the performances? And they've here? taught workshops all over the world and um she's friggin' fierce, Rulon and Caro Romero, one of my very favorite artists. Oh, she's cool. pretty fierce. Fierce. Um, Nikisha Breeze. There's so many, so many just powerful women i admire yeah. so many colleagues and friends here yeah very good you talk about physical strength when you discuss your mma fighter paintings is that in, in the real in the real world ones that you mentioned is physical strength part of being a fierce woman or is that just for a fighter um i think i think there are lots of different kinds of strengths and power yeah cool yeah it doesn't have to be physical but i admire that too i i really admire every kind of movement yeah i thought if i asked who's the fiercest person in albuquerque i knew who you were gonna say or i was worried oh but i thought of another santa fe fierce woman really krista Same. rodriguez the wow. tango teacher oh the tango She's, teacher nice yeah. She's very fierce. So this is a good place but to be. Then. Albuquerque, yeah, Holly yeah, Holm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And Delilah Montoya, the artist, and Cynthia Cook, the artist, right? All fierce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is your Joe Rogan portrait the largest piece you've ever done? No, I've done, um, I did a seven-foot mariachi's piece last year. Okay. And... I've done several other seven foot pieces like that's the max one of the lustra bota a shoe shiner in ecuador and american school girls um palestinian school girls is that to me meant to be hung like really high on a wall in a, like uh maybe <laughs> like, it, uh, like it should be off the ground if it's a seven foot canvas like it's not that it would yeah. just be taller than you? Is it supposed to present over like a really vast space? 
Yeah. I don't know. You I'm just wondering what are the use one cases right here. Yeah, actually. I know. <laughs> yeah, frescoes were just at like eye height, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could put something. Yeah, you could be my interior designer. My uh, my, I would put a world map, which would just be awful and super busy visually. No, that would be great. Not not yeah. If it were like really geometric and like primary colors and simple. Yeah. I might like that. That's what when I was five or six years old, someone gave me a map of the world. It was hanging in my room. It was a big map. Yeah. And I'd sit in front of it for hours and just try and imagine all the different countries. Yeah. And it was part of what made me want to travel. I couldn't wait to yeah, travel. Yeah, we, we mentioned chicken and the egg way back. Uh, for you, did the traveling to to collect did the traveling come first or did you need for raw material come first and then you became a traveler well i w i mean they both are kind of in tandem it's like the shipivo we we're talking about like one informs the other and yes. the other informs the other they inform yeah. each other but like i always wanted to travel from the youngest age i would beg my parents to take me to other countries but they didn't yeah, <laughs> i yeah, had yeah. to wait till i was an adult and save up money are you from new mexico um no but i've been here i mean it, it's been my home base like 30 years 30 yeah what brought you to santa fe uh originally um the College of Santa Fe. I went there for theater. Which is now art. It was University of Art and Design. Is that the same? Yeah. Well, it was called College of Santa Fe. At the time. Years ago. Yeah. yeah. And they had this great um, film department and also a great theater department. Yeah. So I studied all aspects of the theater. Wow. So you had this incredible talent for visual arts and you were training to be an actor. No, um, I wanted to be a a costume designer for uh, film and a screenwriter for film. Yeah. So what I'd never been to New Mexico and um I saw the pictures of the big bright blue sky and the mm -hmm. <laughs> and heard of the film department. But then I got there and realized I had to enroll in theater. Hmm. And so I did um, scene design, scene painting, costume design, all the aspects of the technical theater. Do you still want to do that professionally? No, I mean, by point? the time, by my last year of college, I was just drawing and painting drawing all, the, all time the time. And yeah. Is it a compulsion drawing? Are you like unsettled without uh, um, an implement in your hand? I feel best when I'm yeah, trying. Yeah, you feel best. Gr true. Great. Yeah. But it's interesting with theater because for a long time I thought that I wasn't using that degree, but then it hit me one day that my art is very theatrical in the sense that like um, in theater, in set design, we would we'd paint like, plywood to look like brick or marble mm -hmm. and in costume we'd we'd hot glue you know plastic to look like like um diamonds and that sort of thing and and so you're seeing one thing from the audience perspective and you realize it's something very different when you get up close mm -hmm. and my work's kind of like that like it looks like a painting and then when you get up close you see it's like cigarette packages and cereal boxes yeah, it's and matchbooks and uh, so it's kind of theater oh yes i heard you say this in another interview mm -hmm. uh, it's a very it's a very good tidbit or a very good analogy metaphor um i, I walked like within i don't know two feet of the joe of joe rogan's face uh -huh. and then i stood as far back as i could and it's remarkably different and it's really fun to change your perspective based on how close you are. Oh, I thanks. mean, that's amazing. You're using different colored packaging for the, it's more mosaic. Mm -hmm. It's almost a mosaic. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess it does have that quality.
Yeah. Yeah. What are you working on right now? Do you have a piece? Do you have a seven foot canvas? Mm, I just finished a smaller portrait actually of Amy Winehouse. Really? I've always wanted to do a portrait of her. So it's going to be in my show at Blue Rain on June 24th. Oh, June 24th. That's coming up. Um, this, sh- this will definitely be out before then. Oh, um, good. <laughs> but I'll like I'll I'll try to read backlink to it on Instagram. Oh, thank when that you. day actually comes up, that'll be cool. I hope I can go. Yeah, me uh, too. Blue Rain's pretty incredible. I interviewed Leroy, the owner. Yeah, of course. He's and, uh, such I'm a so great glad I got guy. In there. That was a good interview. I really enjoyed you it. You did. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I've known Leroy like I don't know for. 15 or 20 years maybe he really? collected my work bef- way he, before he i started you. showing there and then i started showing at that gallery like 12 well almost 13 years ago mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he's he's just pure heart he's a great businessman but yeah. he's also um he's got such a great soul you yeah, know savvy, and he's but very altruistic. funny too yeah he's uh but what i love model. most about him is he he'll show work even if he disagrees with the work oh even if he deeply disagrees with because over the years i've done work that um he did not like the subject or disagreed with the the subject the, of the portrait the person i was portraying um, or I was making some statements that he felt very different about, and but he still felt that that his responsibility as the owner of an art venue is to is to give platform to all expression, all um, viewpoints, mm-hmm. perspectives, and. I think that's so huge and like sorely needed right now in, in this day and age too. You've got about five or six pieces on display right now in Blue mm-hmm. Rain. How many will be at your show in June? Um, usually like there's maybe around 20. Oh, neat. So that's really fun. Like at least a dozen large panels but then also many works on paper too oh neat because i do all these like preliminary drawings for the large work Uh, very cool so people can own more than one part of the process if they want yeah yeah and uh and others can just enjoy it during the show yeah that's cool (laughs) i remember i saw david bowie exhibit at the brooklyn museum of art ah uh, he's my favorite and he and it was um notebook pages of him writing scribbling lyrics and scratching and it, wow. it was like look i don't know it was like finding the holy grail or something for me as a writer just seeing like yeah i bet him alone the precursor to his fame and good fortune i guess uh He's a bright a star He's a burned genius. brightly. Yeah, genius, exactly. Um, how can people reach you? We'll go to the fan questions in a second, but is Instagram um, the best? Yeah, you can check out my work in person at Blue Rain Gallery. Mm-hmm. And That's number one. Huh? Some museums own my work as well. And Instagram. I'll have a new website very soon. My website is that I have it's I mean I really appreciate it and the person who created it but as he said it's like a dinosaur my my friend Roscoe he's been doing it for me for like 20 years and the technology's changed so much Mm -hmm. since when he started it so now I'm finally um having help have having a new one made with collaborating with Liz. Cool. Yeah. Erin Courier, Fine Art on Instagram. See her paintings in person at Blue Rain. Let's uh let's just do a few fan questions for some fun. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if one was submitted by an actual fan, I'll shout out their Instagram. I already got to ask that question what brought you to Santa Fe. Uh 
This one comes from at Felix Violins. What is something you're exceptionally good at? So this would be other than drawing. Hmm. Other than trying, making a really good cappuccino. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to have a cappuccino machine to do that? Um, I can make coffee in any form. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just, I'm saying like, uh, is it, this is this sorcery? Do you know how to make a cappuccino just like well, in any kitchen in America? Place, in my studio, I have a, you know those, um, cafeterias, the, uh. the, um, you put it on the stove. It's with water in the bottom half and a basket, like they use. So in it'll Italy. steam milk, like a off mocha the stove. Um, pot. So I make the coffee in that, and then I steam the milk. Wow. Yeah. So it is possible. You should come to my studio sometime, and I'll make you. A really is your good studio in the rail yard? Cappuccino. It's at my. Um, I live in Rark in the yeah. same little place as do i it's a small but sweet sunny place sunny yeah <laughs> you yeah we don't have much natural light in here no it's, this is great yeah this it's one comes sweet place oh thank you yeah i mean um it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek that i film against the front door just to show that i'm a starving artist i have no no extra space to do the show i'm crammed up against the entrance <laughs> and then that's the um A professionally done floral arrangement <laughs> that makes <laughs> makes the brown door look like a window. Um, from at Amazing Adventures twenty, are you more inspired by your conscious or unconscious mind? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I'd say conscious. Wow. Everyone that's answered that has said a mix. And I thought you were going to pick one, but I thought you were going to pick subconscious. So to explain that to me. Well, I mean, it depends on how you define consciousness. Uh -huh. Because I, I think of it as something um, deeper beyond mind, not the mind, mm. not being in your, your head, mm -hmm. your... Um, because I think that, like, there's there's this observer that observes your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, something, there's this part of you that's imperishable, that's not your thoughts, that persists beyond this body. Mm -hmm. And so I think of that as being consciousness. Okay. And I think... Think I think that's what um, creates too, like creates whether it's a child or a garden or cooking a meal or uh -huh. um, music definitely comes out of that place and art. I see. And I notice when I'm really connected, like really in my groove with painting or drawing, like the mind stops. There is no identity and and. Um, chit and mm -mm. you know and, mm -hmm. and mental mm -hmm. um it's that deeper place which is consciousness yeah so then subconscious to you would be maybe like the primal part of us the more basic version so that has its own negative connotations um yeah well not necessarily negative but i think consciousness i think of as pure awareness and yeah. i think when you're creating art or music you are in like heightened awareness yeah being fully conscious is uh tapping into eternity yeah which is like there's a duality to it the it, yeah hmm well i might cut off my own rambling there uh it's been a pleasure talking to you oh it's been a pleasure is there something with is there too. something you want to mention or is there something we didn't talk about um, Since you got a platform, I thought you were gonna ask me who I might recommend oh, for, for the show. Podcast. Yeah, I took that out because and you're a recommendation from Leroy, but I'm happy. I know. Happy I'm, to take a I recommendation live. A lot of people in the course of the podcast that would be fun to talk to. Okay. But I also um, 
I did this. This was a seven foot painting in my show. Of, oh. Um, Fernanda Ruiz, the chef, and Toby Morphine, the artist, and Ralph Martinez, um, who started the Pathways Homeless Shelter. And all three of these guys would be so great to talk with. They're, um, they're pure heart. I've become friends with all of them. I was already friends with Toby before I made the painting. But and Ralph is running for county commissioner of really? Espanola. Oh wow! But he was homeless for seven years and an addict, and he completely turned his life around about a decade ago and opened up Espanola's first homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. And now he's running for county commissioner. Mm -hmm. And Toby's an Espanola artist who's like he's organized all these great fundraisers. Do you think they, they'd want to come on as a trio? Oh, that would be bad. Because I, I am doing that for a comedy collective, the way yeah. we're comedy. Because the three guys who started funny it. Funny, too. They Fernando's, are. yeah, they Neat. all have yeah. a good sense of humor. I'd love to humor. talk to them. Fernando beat out Bobby Flay. He's been on, he's been on all these cooking shows, and nice. he's worked in a lot of restaurants in the area and he's opening his own restaurant soon in espanola um or now here santa in fe? santa fe okay. i think he's based in santa fe um but yeah that would be so badass to have all three of them on actually yeah it would be <laughs> and then at some point i'm gonna have like guest co-hosts for uh, previous guests because mm -hmm. i've i have this third mic and i have this third mic stand and i did i did one brother sister radio co-hosts they were the guests the artists it was so fun cool. just to have another mic. It, it yeah. creates this interesting dynamic. So whenever I can, I'll get more than one person in here. Um, these guys seem great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, any, what else? I don't know. I, I feel like uh, I could talk with you forever and keep learning. Um, well, yeah, I mean, what's like the number one? A three hour. I, three Joe hour, Rogan. yeah, <laughs> Joe Rogan one. I like to do an hour. Uh, what's the number one way that my fans can help you right now? What's the number one call to action? If they um, are going to get up off the couch and uh I think just be kind to one another, you know. I think so many people especially with this pandemic like you don't know when what kind of personal challenges people are going through. I think about that a lot especially with um elders, you know. And but every age, I mean, think how hard it must have been to be a kid or teenager you know, during the pandemic, mm -hmm. to not be with your peers. Mm -hmm. I think, like, human contact and is so important, like, to hold hands or wrestle or well, mess yeah, around. We've, or had, we've had a shared trauma. Everybody's going through a, a little bit of a lot. Yeah. Uh. And so, I mean, it's not for me personally. It's just... um I don't know, just something I think about that, like, um, we're all human and who knows what each person is grappling with. We're all mortal, you know? Mm hmm Yeah. I think uh, the further I get away from remembering that, the more nervous and anxious I get. So that's wonderful. I will um, take that to heart um, myself. Yeah, and... And also tell your listeners, like, please go hear your comedy. <laughs> 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 I'm going to check it out. Yeah, I invite and everyone come possible. See my show. Yeah, come, go see in Aaron's show June in June. 24th we'll promote it. <laughs> oh, Whatever you. I can possibly do. I'm just a little pirate artist radio out here. but. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, the eyeballs are uh, matter. Highly local. People you might meet in person. So. It's a cool yeah. little show. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs>